God also feels divine, radiant, magical, miraculous, and alive. So the reason we call it God and spirituality is because spirit has an inherent, divine, radiant, magical quality to it because it's spontaneous being or spontaneous self-creation. It's miraculous. It's literally a miracle. The entire universe, this very moment right here is a miracle. You've just become so jaded to it because you're so preoccupied with just living life pragmatically that you ignore the miracle that is life, the magic that is here, the divinity that's here. You don't see the divinity because you're like a fish in water. And it feels alive in the sense that life is not a limited category that only applies to organic life forms or biological creatures. The entire universe is alive. It's sentient, it's conscient. Or it's, uh, it's, it's sentient and it's conscious. So when you realize that, that, that radically reinterprets how you relate it to the universe. Because before that, you had a materialistic paradigm. Under the materialistic paradigm, you viewed most of the universe, except for creatures, you viewed most of it as dead, dead matter. But after the epiphany of God, you realize that it's not dead at all. It's alive. Everything's alive. Molecules are alive. The earth is alive. It's a much broader, more expanded notion of what life is. God also feels like not knowing. God feels like irreducible mystery. You might think that you're going to know God, but really you're not going to know God. You're going to not know God. Because like I told you, you can't know God. You can be God. But to be God means you can't know it. Precisely because knowing is a second order emergent or phenomenon of being. Knowing is always indirect. Knowing is what separates you from God. Not knowing is as close to God as you can get. And see, this is the whole problem with the scientific paradigm is that science is always trying to explain and reduce away the mystery of existence. And the way it does that is by substituting some other object. So it's taking content within existence and explaining it by, by, by pointing to some other content. So, you know, how did the Earth get here? Well, because of some space dust from some star. But how did the space dust get there? Well, because of some other star that exploded. And how did that get there? Well, some other star exploded. But how did it ultimately get here? Well, because of, there was a, a big bang. But how did that get here? Well, we don't know. See? So science is playing this game of explaining one thing in terms of another thing until ultimately you take it to the big bang. And then you just say, oh, well, forget about it. We can't really know. And then let's just go about uh, living an ordinary life. See, this is the whole game. The whole point of this tail chasing exercise that it never ends. It's infinite, but you're not realizing that it's infinite. And therefore you're not realizing that, um, that science ultimately doesn't explain a goddamn thing. See, all you're doing is you're explaining one corner of creation in terms of another corner. That's what science is doing. It's drawing connections, but it's not seeing the totality all at once, which is what differentiates science from spirituality. God also feels like the greatest moment of your life. For sure. The greatest moment of your life. Nothing else comes close. And it feels totally life transforming. It feels like after this epiphany, nothing in your life will ever be the same again. 